What strategies support self-discovery for masked autistics? That's what we're going to explore in this week's episode of Pookie Ponders. Let's dive straight in. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Pookie Ponders podcast. I'm your host Pookie and today we are delving into a topic that is incredibly close to my own heart, finding yourself as a masked autistic. Whether you're an adult who spent a lifetime masking or a teenager navigating the world beyond school, unmasking and discovering your true self can be a transformative journey. Join me as we explore strategies and insights inspired by my own experience and those of my daughters. Together we'll embark on a quest to unveil authenticity and embrace the unique strengths that lie beneath the mask. This is a journey that myself and my daughters find ourselves very much on. I wasn't diagnosed as autistic until my mid-30s and my daughters have both recently, relatively recently, started home educating. So we're about a year or so into that journey now. Um, One of my daughters in particular, Lyra, has become very self-aware and talks about how she spent all of her lifetime at school trying to be the student, the friend, the child that people needed and wanted her to be. And as she began to feel more comfortable at home she found herself questioning but who am I really and I kind of look at her and I look to her for inspiration because I find myself asking exactly the same questions but this comes after decades of masking and not really understanding myself so this is a journey that myself Lyra and also my other daughter Ellie find ourselves on and 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 the ideas that I share today these are very much things that we are working hard to engage with I hope they will be a springboard for you as they are with us. I can't promise they're the whole answer. We are very much works in progress and I'd really invite your ideas on this too. Do come join us uh, on the socials or or drop me an email or speak to me face to face if we ever get that joy and let me know what's working for you or the people who you are supporting. Okay, so first we're going to think about creating space to pursue our actual interests. So In our lives, we often find ourselves on a path that's driven by external expectations, societal norms and the pressure to conform. And we will find ourselves sometimes engaging in activities or pursuits that, while they have merits, may not really resonate with our inner selves. It can lead to a bit of a sense of, I suppose, emptiness or feeling a bit disconnected from our authentic desires. When we allow ourselves the liberty to to explore what genuinely captivates us, regardless of what society thinks, we open the door to this world of personal growth and happiness and fulfillment. These authentic interests can become a source of motivation, uh, a kind of uh, driving force that's going to fuel our passions and bring us a deep sense of purpose. Um, Identifying engaging with our genuine interests can help us to begin to build a sense of self and add just joy to our day like maybe the things that really get you that really excite you just don't make sense to anyone else but that's okay so we start here by noticing what we like and what matters to us and just trying to shrug off that cloak of societal acceptability choosing instead to do the geeky thing the kooky thing the thing that makes our heart sing How do we go about creating space for our genuine interests in our daily lives? Here are some practical ideas to help you navigate this. So first of all, dedicate regular time each week to indulge in your special interests. Actually, literally block that in your diary. This is when I'm going to do the thing that I love. Join online communities or groups that share your passion. You might not have people in your real life, day to day, face to face, who get it, who like the same things as you. Maybe you have a deep interest in root planning and train journeys, or perhaps rabbits are your thing, whatever it might be. Like find the people who also love that. You may need to go online, you might need to, to, to hunt more widely, but when you find that other person who also absolutely loves Dungeons and Dragons, suddenly everything feels brilliant. Explore um, niche hobbies, activities and games and whatever that genuinely interest you. So this is about just noticing what brings you a bit of joy, thinking about the things that have sparked a bit of interest or curiosity in the past and just allowing yourself space to 
actually explore those things rather than sort of shutting them off because they're not cool or no one else likes them or whatever 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 get get curious and and just explore that doesn't mean they're going to become your new thing they may not we explore things and some of these are going to work out and and some of them aren't but if we don't explore we're never going to find the thing that feels great next is to set specific goals um, related to your interests so that kind of help to maintain your motivation so if you're embarking on a new area of interest a new hobby a new skill a new passion actually kind of setting yourself some goals some targets some things around that to help you to, to kind of do those first stages of engagement and try and make those entries into that world uh, could be really really fun so for for myself for an example um, I relatively recently took up cycling and I've been really enjoying that and making myself a goal of just getting on my bike each day has been really helpful I haven't made any goals around how far I have to cycle where I have to go what that needs to look like but just getting on my bike um, and even if I just get on it and cycle five minutes around the block then that's a start and it makes me create space for that hobby to think about it to engage with it and these like little goals can make a really big difference to our ability to begin to engage with the thing that we're ultimately going to enjoy it helps us make space in our heads in our lives um, and then number five is, is is just about embracing the joy. So embrace the joy of being an expert in this area of interest, passion, fascination as you begin to learn more. One of the things you will often find is that if you embrace new hobbies, new skills, new interests, new passions, you will quickly become um, very proficient. This is one of the joys of being autistic. We tend to go deep and we tend to go quite fast deep. Um, and so quickly you will become proficient expert and you will enjoy it more than other people you may know more than other people your skills may exceed those of other people embrace that love it appreciate it about yourself allow that to be part of who you are Okay, so that was all about creating space to find and pursue your special interest. Next, number two, and um, we think about finding and leaning into flow. So as autistics, we possess an incredible gift, the ability to hyper-focus and enter this state of flow. This state which you might think of as being in the zone is going to allow you to fully immerse yourself in activities where you like lose track of time, achieve this deep sense of concentration and satisfaction um, and, and embracing this and, and harnessing this skill can lead to really profound personal growth, greater connection with our authentic selves because that, that flow state, that zone comes about at, at times when we're connecting with stuff that, that really matters with us, that we perhaps have great proficiency at or great interest in. So it, it's really good at like marking and identifying things that are, are good for us to spend our time doing and it, it feels good as well it's like a break from the rest of the world where we maybe feel other and different and like we don't quite fit and maybe where we feel less proficient at things and in this flow state we are great we're doing great everything else has fallen away and we're probably doing things to a really high level as well and it's going to feel really good so these flow experiences they can be quite sort of transformative and they can give us a bit of a sense of purpose and accomplishment they allow us to tap into our strengths and our passions and they help us to navigate the kind of complexities of life a little bit more confidently so it's a good thing um, we can do this we can make it work by identifying the triggers that lead to our flow states so we can then intentionally create opportunities for them in our daily lives this is going to mean setting aside dedicated time, creating conducive environments for concentration and minimizing the distractions. It's about using our flow state as this powerful tool for personal growth and for pursuing interests that truly resonate with us. So, so much of this is about being intentional. It's about going, these are times and spaces and places and activities that make me enter this state of flow. I'm going to purposefully embrace with that. I'm going to enable this state. I'm going to make space for these times when I feel good and I'm doing really well. So how do we do that? Let's have a think about some practical ideas to help you embrace and cultivate your flow experience. So first of all, start by identifying your 
like flow triggers, if you like. Um, this is about thinking about what activities tend to make you lose track of time and fully engage and focus. So cast your mind back over the last week or month or longer and think about times when you fully lost track of time. Suddenly it was dark outside and you realised you'd forgotten to eat. What were you doing? Where did that happen? What was the activity? Identify these things first. Next, you're going to think about allocating like specific time slots in your schedule for those flow experiences to give them the priority they deserve. The thing about flow is it can take up quite a bit of time and it's great time and we feel good and great stuff can happen in that time. But it does take time. If we just allow it to kind of occur, then often we find, well, OK, this is great. I'm in the flow, but suddenly I've got to be somewhere else or I've forgotten to be the somewhere else we end up beating ourselves up or things go a bit wrong but if we can allocate time and say this afternoon in my week is all about this or this evening I'm going to allow three hours to enter that state of flow while I do x then we begin to able to really engage with it and it doesn't detract from other areas of our life um, and we can do this without guilt without worry and most crucially without interruption then we need to think about creating an environment for that flow state an environment that's going to promote concentration that might be a quiet space you might be someone who likes soothing background music or you might be using like noise cancelling headphones think about for you what's going to most help that state of flow when you have been in the state of flow before what's it been like what's the lighting like where are you what are you listening to what needs to go away so I'm always turning off all my notifications and devices and putting myself on do not disturb I've always got some nice gentle music going on in the background I've got my door shut some sometimes a notice there or on WhatsApp out to the family saying, you know, I'm focused right now, leave me alone, essentially, which is something we practice in our family. Um, my husband, who uh, claims to be the neurotypical one in the family, I think it's just relative, but he, even he, when he wants to really focus and get into flow with his work, he'll put a notice on his door saying, I'm indistractable, um, please come back later, essentially. And our kids, our family know that if it's an emergency, they could come in, but we're pretty respectful of this. We all need this kind of time sometimes and having these conversations as a family um, can really help us to to identify and enable those times of flow next think about harnessing your flow state um, both for personal growth such as learning new skills and indulging your genuine interests this is a way essentially of giving ourselves permission to work with that flow time because we can see it as a productive and good use of our time because when I say well you might want to allow three hours to go into your flow state suddenly we find ourselves jumping to but I don't have three hours how can I possibly spend that amount of time I do not have the budget of time to spend three hours on this but if that three hours was spent in a way that you could see as somehow productive contributing to your skills to your hobbies to your interests your work maybe even then perhaps it feels more possible to allocate that time and the amount you get done if you want to be productive whatever that means to you in that time the amount you'll get done is incredible so I do all my work this indeed is being recorded between the hours of four and seven in the morning I've mentioned this many times before I'm sure people find it a curiosity but this is the time when I find my flow this is the time when there are no other distractions this is the time when I have my quiet music on and the world outside is quiet and asleep and so I don't have all those distractions as well this is a time of deep concentration and focus and flow for me in those three hours each day, I get done more than I used to get done in a full working day when I worked more normally um, back before I was home educating uh, and living in a house that was a constant building site. Um, and, and so it really works for me, finding that flow, using that time really hyper productively. So there's hyper focus and with it comes hyper productivity. So identify that, harness it, use it to your advantage, because that will also allow you to give yourself permission to create that time. And then finally, reflect on the insights, creativity and fulfillment that that flow experience brings to your life. By actively pursuing and leaning into this state of flow, you're going to find that you can enrich your life, or at least I found I've been able to enrich mine and kind of embrace your authentic self a bit more um, and, and just thrive really in a world that can feel overwhelming, because this is like a little holiday from life. This is where you do feel comfortable, where you can do great things.
Okay, so next we're gonna think about noticing and embracing the real you. So unmasking, taking that mask off, becoming ourselves is it's a profound journey and it's gonna go beyond just like that very sort of superficial idea of removing the mask we wear in various social situations. It's also about rediscovering, going deeper and embracing the real you, who is in there. The person who lies beneath those layers of societal expectations and pretenses. This process of self-discovery is going to be liberating and transformative as we begin to notice and celebrate the subtle signs that begin to reveal our authentic selves, or at least this has been my experience. So understanding and accepting our genuine qualities is, is really rewarding. Um, I found things like keeping a journal to record thoughts, emotions, observations, this can help to gain valuable insights into our inner world that can sometimes go unnoticed otherwise. Um, reflecting on our natural responses to different situations and stimuli can help us to uncover our authentic reactions and preferences. How do I naturally reply, respond, react in that situation rather than the way I've programmed myself to. Uh, this can sometimes get a little bit uncomfortable. I found myself doing things in particular like responding really inappropriately recently when somebody told me they were pregnant with their first child because my natural response was one of horror to be honest for them because children are wonderful, amazing, lovely. I spend my whole life working towards making the world a better place for them but as a parent, I would have to say that process of going from having no children to having the first one is um, disruptive, to say the least, is it not? Um, and so my natural response when confronted with this information and with my mask somewhat down because I was in a comfortable paragliding situation with my friends who uh, know a little bit more of the real me, though there's still significant masking that happens there, but a little bit more of the real me. I was just perhaps a little bit too honest. It was fine. The friend, I believe, interpreted this as a joke, so that was okay. But so yeah, just beware a little bit as you begin to unmask and begin to allow the actual things that you're thinking to, to come out a little bit more. Sometimes that, that can create situations that you may be slightly remorseful of later. Anyhow, but, but be curious, what is my genuine reaction? I wouldn't have even allowed myself to think and embrace that idea before I'd have said, well, the appropriate response in this situation is congratulations, that's wonderful. And we say all the positive things that everybody else says um, and that society tells us that we are supposed to say. But that wasn't my genuine, authentic, natural reaction. I thought something else. And, and being curious about that and exploring it, whether it's out loud with a friend or whether it's in your private journaling, you choose. But it's an interesting process where we get to know ourselves a little bit. You can also do things like ask for feedback from your trusted friends or family members about your qualities and what they perceive of you and get these sort of external perspectives um, on your self-discovery journey that can also help a little bit with with finding ourselves what have other people observed about you I find uh, I'm not I I've, I don't understand myself very well but some people who know me well so my husband my good friend David they will make observations about me that I'm curious about and often I'll go away once they've made these observations and journal them and explore them and wonder about them and this can help me sometimes to connect with bits of myself that other people have seen glimpses and glimmers of um, that help to guide me a little bit in in kind of ways forward I suppose. It seems strange that idea that someone else might be able to help guide that journey for you better than you can yourself but when you've spent a whole lifetime building layers and layers and layers and walls between you um, and the world then it can be a bit hard to connect with who you really are, but others might observe that more keenly if they know you and love you deeply. Another little part of this, uh, which seems like a small thing, but is kind of a big thing in the day to day for those of us who are autistic, is thinking about self-soothing. So experimenting uh, with self-soothing methods that feel comforting to you and allow you to nurture your well-being in a way that's tailored to your needs. Um, recognizing those those quirks, those idiosyncrasies, those little stims, and so on um, that that feel good um, and allow you just to comfortably be. And again, these are often things these these quirks, these stims, these sorts of things, the things that we've often blocked we've moved away from because they weren't acceptable they weren't normal um, in this neurotypical world and just noticing them and starting to embrace them a little bit if we feel comfortable can be helpful so okay so what might this all look like for you or the person that you're supporting here are some practical ideas as ever so maybe begin by keeping a journal this for me has been quite 
wonderful, um, where you can regularly document your thoughts, your emotions, your experiences, reflect on the good, reflect on the bad, be curious. Um, secondly, reflect on how you naturally respond to various situations, conversations, stimuli, note your genuine reactions and preferences. Again, this might form part of your journaling or just notes to self as you're wandering around in your day-to-day -day life, just stopping, noticing, oh, I felt this way and engaging kind of proactively with that thought in a concrete way uh, can, can help. We just begin to get a bit more in touch with ourselves. Next is engaging with open and honest conversations with trusted friends and family members who might be able to give you some feedback on the qualities and traits that make you unique. There'll be things about you that they love, that they notice, that they know are just so you that you might not have ever noticed for yourself before. Be brave, have those conversations. These can be really enlightening and lovely. Um, experiment with different self-soothing methods, so different sensory activities, relaxing techniques, and try to discover what brings you kind of comfort and peace. So explore the worlds of simming and sensory and, and see what feels good. Be unafraid of it. Find your things. Um, if you're an adult here thinking about it like you would for a child so quite often we would with a child who was beginning to explore their sensory profile just offer them loads of different items that they might use to explore this and we'd get really curious do this for yourself find what feels good um, and then finally here, embrace and celebrate the quirks, the idiosyncrasies and the strengths that make you authentically you. So as you begin to notice them, lean into them, let them become more of you. And this is going to make you be closer to your authentic self. It will feel better. It will feel good. And you'll have more character, more personality. As we embrace this idea of self-discovery, we're going to cultivate a kind of deeper connection with ourselves and build a more profound sense of self-acceptance and self-love in my experience because we are being us rather than this other all the time and that self-acceptance that self-love this is who I am and that's okay it's just a more comfortable existence and it's a path that's going to lead to more authenticity and a richer and just more fulfilling life. That then leads us on to the next section here where we're going to think about choosing our connections wisely. And this becomes really important as we begin to embrace that authentic self a little bit more. So as we get to know and hopefully to love and be compassionate towards our more authentic selves, it becomes evident that not everyone's going to appreciate and understand our true identity. Our, our circles may become smaller, but better. And that's okay. So we're going to think about how we select connections that genuinely support and celebrate who we are. So evaluating our existing relationships and prioritizing those that bring positivity and acceptance. These things are crucial. This is a really significant step. Engaging in activities or joining groups that align with your interests and your values can help you to connect with like-minded people who appreciate and celebrate your authenticity. Setting boundaries with people who don't appreciate and understand your true self is also going to become increasingly essential for your well-being. Surrounding yourself with individuals who share similar experiences, who genuinely understand you or who care and provide a sense of belonging and support feels good. So bring them in hold them close, maybe build some walls and boundaries and barriers for the people who do not do this, who do not make us feel good, who do not appreciate our true authentic selves. So we're going to focus on building a few strong, meaningful connections rather than trying to make everybody like us and pursuing many superficial connections. Quality relationships with people who appreciate your authentic self are going to be fulfilling and they're going to be nurturing and they're going to help you to continue to work on finding and embracing that true self because they get it, they like it, they make it feel safe and so you can continue to grow. Okay, so some practical ideas to help you choose connections wisely as you embrace your authentic self. So first of all, just take a little bit of time to evaluate your existing relationships. Here I found myself thinking, I shall write a spreadsheet with pros and cons for each person in my life. I will rank them and then sort them. I mean, I, I might actually genuinely do this kind of activity if that works for you, do it. Otherwise, maybe just, just have a bit of a think. Um, Prioritise those that bring positivity, support and acceptance in your life. See, I've got my columns on my Excel spreadsheet all ready to go. Positivity, support, acceptance. Those who rate most highly here shall be in. The others, goodbye, I'm sorry, <laughs> I joke. But I, I mean, 
I have done in my life many times, sorting processes um, of, of, of who's in and who's out. And it, it can be rather brutal, but I'm alive and rather happier than I have been at other times in my life. Um, and it is in part to do with who is welcomed warmly in and for whom the bell tolls. OK, next, think about activities and groups that might align with your interests and values, which are going to provide opportunities to connect with individuals who share your passion. So going to that Dungeons and Dragons club for me, hanging out at the climbing wall, going to the wall and paragliding. Not at the moment. I record this. You're probably listening to it much later, but at a time when I have a dislocated elbow as a result of my paragliding antics. Although I still hanging out at the hill, just doing so with a sling and looking like a cautionary tale for some of my paragliding friends. But yeah, being with people who love the things you love who love the places you love who love the people you love these people um, will feel good and you're more likely to build those deeper connections um, set and communicate boundaries with individuals who may not appreciate or understand your more authentic self to ensure your well-being is a top priority here boundaries are okay make them set them stick to them and if the person doesn't respect them think about how much you really want to be with them with them in your lives connect with individuals who have similar experiences they may also be autistic for example or they may also be a parent or you know they share bits of your life and they'll really get it and can empathize with your journey fostering a sense of belonging and support i find this with my daughters because we're all going through this process of kind of self uh, identification and self-care and self-compassion at the same time trying to find ourselves them as they are working through their teenage years um, and me as i'm much much older but still searching for self uh, just being able to go on the journey together is, is is interesting and helpful and a little bit less lonely um, and then finally focus on building a few select strong and meaningful connections with people who really appreciate and celebrate your authenticity this is about thinking quality not quantity this is about embracing the idea that there will be few great people in your life rather than many many people but on a really shallow level this is a kind of active change we might seek to make because we may previously have been a people pleaser who tried to ensure that everybody liked us for example and now we might go it, you know it's okay if not everybody likes me because the more you kind of embrace your true personality your character your authentic self the more that you will be a bit marmite to people um, and those who love you will deeply love you and cherish you and really really nurture and care for you and other people won't like you um, and that's I mean it's hard to get your head around a little bit when you've been used to just trying to be the chameleon and make everyone like you but it is actually okay it's okay to have an opinion it's okay to have a strong personality that not everybody's going to get behind because those who do will you'll connect on such a deeper level next we think about being inspired by the values of others so this is as we're on this journey of self-discovery and embracing our authentic selves there are times when actually being inspired by others not being them but being inspired by them can really help and i found here particularly if you're so out of touch with your like core values and beliefs then it can be hard to know where to start like what do i really believe in what are the things that really matter to me what are my core values in life and if you don't know what those values are for yourself because you've been so used to being the chameleon to putting on the mask you're just echoing that of the people around you then just taking a step back and going i i don't know what my core values and beliefs here are i don't know what this system for me will look like but thinking who are people that do embody stuff I really care about. So identifying some people who kind of influence you. And it's not about like, in the same way as, as you're sort of masking and your camouflaging is about reflecting the values of those around you. You're sort of doing the same thing, but in a really purposeful way. So instead of just reflecting automatically whoever's in the room at the time, you're picking out key people, key kind of influences who you think they've got it really sorted. I really like the way that they approach their life. So for example, my friend David, he has this really fantastic approach to work and life balance. And he's all about adventure and about creating the time and the space to have fun and playfulness and being able to go out and have really good times. He, he enjoys his work. It really matters to him. He runs his own business and he does that really well. And he does that, but it's not the first and only thing he is 
always thinking and where is the space for life and that for me has been a value that I have looked to echo and replicate in my own life and I've learned from him and explored with him and began to really understand as as very important my work matters it will always be a really important thing in my life but it's okay for me to sometimes think about and what about all the other adventures that could be happening outside of my work what does life outside of my work look like and how do I get this balance right um yeah what what what's the value there for me so reflect on the qualities and the values that inspire you in people that you might have identified here and think about how you can use these qualities as a bit of like a, a compass sort of guiding you towards your own authentic values and beliefs if you feel just sort of a bit out of touch with them. Um, engaging with content or stories that align with these newfound values as you start to see them emerge um, can reinforce that journey a little bit and actively integrating these values into your decision making and actions connecting with self and going does this next decision align with that value that I've recently identified as important to me it's going to help you begin to make a life that more and more aligns with what really matters for you so the other thing here is going to be about sharing those evolving values with your trusted friends or any mentors that you might have um, which can help with with feedback and can help them to support you in this process as well so some practical ideas to help you be inspired by the values of others and connect with your genuine values. So start by identifying individuals that you admire and resonate with in terms of various aspects of their life and values. Then think about how you can um, reflect on the qualities and values that inspire you in those individuals and think about how they align with your own beliefs and where there's a gap there, how that gap might begin to be addressed. Engage with content, literature, stories that reflect on and reinforce your newfound values as you see them emerging. Then think about how you can actively integrate these values into your daily decision making. Make decisions always where you can, driven by these core values that you are identifying so that you're making decisions which are connected to your true authentic sense of self and allow these values to guide your choices big and small um, and then finally sharing those evolving values with your friends or mentors and seek their feedback and support as you continue to define and redefine what this might all look like being inspired by the values of others and incorporating them into your own journey of self-discovery is going to create this really strong foundation rooted in authenticity and purpose without us having to do every single bit of the hard work ourselves if we're completely out of touch with what our values might look like and then finally today we're going to think about doing what we need not what we should so this is about exploring the liberating concept of advocating for ourselves and engaging in activities that genuinely fulfill us it's about the importance of prioritizing self-care and authenticity so practicing self-advocacy by expressing our needs and boundaries clearly is going to be a fundamental step here it's going to empower us to navigate life in a way that aligns with our authentic self prioritizing activities and self-care practices that nurture our well-being is going to be a powerful way to honor our true self these moments when we can recharge reflect and find inner peace um, embracing things like stimming and sensory self-soothing techniques when necessary is an act of self-compassion it's going to allow ourselves to find comfort and relief in our unique ways and adapting social situations to suit our comfort level and preferences um, is about creating spaces where we can be ourselves without the mask without pretense and celebrating small victories and self-care moments that align with our authentic self is a reminder of the progress that we're making on the journey. So this bit about doing what we need, not what uh, others kind of expect of us or what we think we should, um, is it really brings together lots of the other stuff. But it's about really purposefully just going, this is how I need my world to be. This is what is, is helpful to me um, rather than just like, and this is how I fit in with the rest of the world at great cost to myself. Oh, hello, burnout. So how can you do what you need not what you should. Here are a few ideas to put it into practice. So first of all, practice self-advocacy. If you're supporting someone, you can be the advocate by their side and lead the way on this a little bit as well. Um, you might also look for a buddy, a friend, someone who might advocate for you in the early days. But we want to get to the point where we can practice this self-advocacy, where we're able to openly express our needs and our boundaries. This means understanding them for ourselves, finding ways to express them clearly, having the right words um, and being more explicit. Start in situations where you feel most comfortable being able to do so with friends and in places where it feels 
okay to, to to do that hey do you mind if we just turn that music off in the background because i'm finding it really hard to concentrate on our conversation uh, right now i find it difficult when there's conflicting auditory input with a friend in a space that feels safe these sorts of first steps are where we start and it can get bigger over time as our confidence builds secondly prioritizing activities and self-care practices that are going to nurture our mental emotional and physical well-being so making space in our lives for those acts which help us the things that we need in order to feel good no matter how kooky strange or nonsensical they might seem to the rest of the world if it's what we need we make space for it i'm doing this in a big way for myself right now um identifying periods where there are extreme busyness in my work life in particular and then making time afterwards for me to escape from life this escape from life running away it might look like is actually running towards myself towards self-compassion towards self-care um, and allowing myself to reset to try and prevent the autistic burnout that has kind of really blighted the last uh, few weeks for me I'm trying to avoid that moving forward so I've identified periods of busyness and then try to build in times of calm afterwards so one of the things I have done is to book a solo walking retreat uh, where I can be completely alone walking through beautiful Slovenia and I think this will help me to reset after a particularly busy work month that I have coming up and I've got all sorts of little things that's not a little thing I've got all sorts of big things like that that I have planned in in terms of self-care this isn't realistic for everyone but this is what I have found over time works for me these in, these intense periods of busyness followed by violence away and doing something that really kind of soothes my soul and excites me and allows me to engage with this completely other aspect um, of self. Um, we also can be embracing uh, on a smaller level stimming and sensory self-soothing techniques and, and thinking about the things that provide us comfort and relief. So as you engage with these behaviours, remind yourself that they are positive behaviours. So we need to flip our narrative on stimming self-sensory behaviors and think about the fact they shouldn't carry any shame or stigma but rather I am proactively doing the things that I need try and rewrite this story from within and remember that if you're an adult doing this you're acting as such a great role model to children and young people uh, in your life as well because you give them permission also to engage with the activities that nurture help and support them Next is thinking about how to adapt social situations to align with your comfort level and personal preferences. This needs to start by knowing what is your comfort level and what are your personal preferences um, and talk to your trusted friends or family about how they can help you to enable this in situations when you don't feel comfortable tackling it head on yet. Um, and finally, celebrate small victories and self-care moments that resonate with your authentic self, reinforcing the importance of staying true to who you are. You can do this by by take, talking to a friend or a loved one about this and just noticing it or capturing these as a picture or in a journal or just taking note, noticing what happened to yourself and how it felt. The more that we tune into and notice these moments when things went well and when things resonate, when we manage to do the right thing by ourselves, when we notice that and kind of internally note it, the more that we feel able to return to those things in the future. By embracing with these practical ideas and prioritizing our kind of self-care authentically, we can begin to navigate life with a little bit more ease and fulfillment and ultimately just be a little bit more ourselves. So in today's episode, we embarked on this journey of self-discovery and authenticity as masked autistics. We explored the process of starting to unmask and looking for our genuine selves beneath all these many layers of societal expectations. From making space for our true interest to leaning into the flow and embracing our real selves and choosing connections wisely, we uncovered what I hope we will find to be valuable insights and practical strategies. So I hope there were some practical ideas in here for you. If you liked what you heard today, please do subscribe and share my work. You can support my work further by joining me over on Patreon, where you get early access to all my resources and the chance to influence what I work on next. Or you can invite me to come and speak at your next event, either virtually or face to face. Thank you so much for listening and for everything that you are doing for the children and young people in your care. This has been Pookie Ponders with me, Pookie Knightsmith. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate and keep pondering. Over and out. Mm -hmm.